Welcome to the second episode of Project Redline. Today it's time to get started on the project, so without wasting any more time, let's get stuck into it. So in this episode, we're going to take a step back from the car, have a real good look at it, and take out everything we don't like, so we're ensuring we get the best possible blank canvas to start with. Then, we're going to get it rolling again, new wheels, new brakes, new tyres, new suspension, and really get stuck into it. Okay, the first step is to remove everything that shouldn't be there, won't be used, or we don't like. So originally to make those pipes fit up nice and flush and make it look like they were really well joined in there, um, they'd just use a whole heap of bog basically to fill in the gaps. Um, easy quick way of showing where the bog is, is you'll see this sticks to steel easily and extends the tip. So if we start out here, it doesn't look like this. I don't know how much steel is actually. <laughs> in this thing. A little bit up there. Bog, 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 bog. Bit of steel on the edge. Bog, bog. And steel starts about there too. So realistically, we've got to cut out, I want to cut out all of this. So I don't want any of this bog in the car basically. All right, so that was plenty of work, but at least now we've got a proper blank canvas on what to start with. We can work out what needs to go where, how long it's gonna take, and the process of how to do it. So let's get stuck into all the rest of it. All right, so now we've removed everything we didn't want, it's time to add in everything we need back in. So it's time to template, cut, grind, and weld this car back to its former glory. We start by using cardboard to sketch out a rough size and shape of what we need to work with. then transfer this to sheet metal. And then it's onto the angle grinder, cutting out pieces that will bring this car back to life. A few test fits and we're good to go. Some locking clamps, magnetic clamps, and it zaps up with the welder to hold it all in place. As it is a race car, we're going to fill in all the extra firewall holes, bolt holes and whatnot. So the engine bay is entirely sealed off from the driver's cabin. We'll add in any new holes we need later.
So one of the big parts of restoring this engine bay to its uh, standard sort of stock form is filling in these giant cutouts that have been made way for, uh, I think, turbos, twin turbo setup. I know a big V8 that was in this engine bay before. So um, although we may mount a turbo here and route an exhaust out here or something, um, I still want to get the engine bay looking as standard as possible before I decide where I want the cuts. So uh, I've located some uh, factory inner guards from a 626 and a wreckers and we'll uh, weld those in now. Okay, so it's starting to take shape. We've got a complete firewall again. The ends of the rails are cancer free and we've got actual front guard inners again. Time to make it all look pretty with some seam sealer, a little bog, an orbital sander and a fresh look of paint. So we've got a new rails in uh, and we've done a, 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 a few patch jobs with just some seam sealer over where we've welded things. Um, as you can see, the, the paint that was originally in here is pretty, was pretty average. We're almost right down to uh, the original primer there. We've redone the tunnel with steel um, and a slight amount of uh, seam sealer over the top. Uh, before, there was great big globs of silicon or something just holding the tunnel basically into the firewall. So, we repaired that. So, what we're going to do is, um, first of all, just get some wax and grease remover. And I'm not going to bother removing all the sound deadening and stuff. That's just way too much work, but what I am going to do is paint over all this uh, colouring. I use a thick chassis style painter uh, that I can just simply brush on, so this stuff's very thick to coat. And although you might see brush strokes now, um, they actually fill in very well. And when this is actually dried, You'll find there won't be many brush strokes that you can see, if any at all. So, give this uh, wheel arch a new lease of life. And here it is. What was once a terribly neglected engine bay is now resembling something a little bit closer to what would have rolled off the Mazda production line all those years ago. The goal here isn't show car elite status, just a nice clean base to build upon. So that's it for the engine bay. It's time to get this car back rolling and turn our attention to the brakes. Now as this is a drag car and it's relatively light, it's going to have a parachute so we don't need huge brakes to pull this thing up. The stock 626 disc is the solid one here. As you can see it's certainly seen better days. We are going to upgrade it with an RX-7 item. It's not really a hell of a lot of difference between the diameters of the two um, rotors we're using. They're actually basically exactly the same but the main difference is this rotor is solid. Uh, this rotor is vented, so this one will dissipate any any heat much quicker. It means the brakes are much more effective. So um, what we have to do now is push these bearing races in. This is a, a a brand new rotor, so you see it's just a machined rotor surface in here. Uh, what happens now is these races are pushed in here, and that's what the bearing locates into, and then the stub axle sits in here. So we'll use our our bearing installer, our hydraulic press to press those in place uh, and then we can uh, lubricate all the bearings and install it back onto the stub axle. First we just lightly install the uh, race into the rotor. Just a slight bit of lubrication with some Penrite uh, high temp wheel bearing grease which is the same grease we'll be using for the, for the wheel bearings. See now the bearing race is seated perfectly all the way down there, so time to flip it over and do this side. Alright, so next thing we want to do, put the bearing race is installed in the disc brake. We've got our brand new wheel bearings. We need to thoroughly grease these up before we're installing them, so could use a bearing packer, but we're going to do it the old-fashioned manual way here, which involves getting your high-quality uh, wheel bearing grease, your dollop of it in the palm of your hand, and then just working it through, going around the bearing, pushing it through the gap between here and looking for it come all the way out the top of the bearing so and at the side so you just work around in a circle all the way until you see it fully immersed in the bottom and the top 
and then it's uh, ready to install. So we just start basically by pushing it in and you'll see it now starting to come out up the top. We can easily just keep on doing that, working our way through. We usually get some coming through the middle, can just pull that out even, use that to repack. You see all the greases come out the top here now. It's also out the sides, out the bottom. So that's basically ready, ready to be installed. We'll also just make sure we coat all the inside of this bearing surface. Now this rear seal also uh, locks it in, everything in place. So uh, we'll also grease that up just before it goes back in. And that's pretty much it. So that's the back side of the, of the disc rotor with new bearings installed and sealed, all packed. Uh, the job now is just to do the same thing uh, at the front. We've got some new pads to slam into the RX-7 calipers. But with budget in mind, we're going to stick with the stock springs and shocks and see how they serve us. So turning our attention to the rear of the car, we can see a fair bit of work needs to go on here. The stock brakes are rusted, the wheel studs are broken off, the shocks are rooted, and we need to place a lot of work into mounting brackets, and even the factory arms, they're just bent and buckled. So we're going to replace those with some chromoly items. The shocks are going to be replaced with some double adjustables, but first, we're going to replace the new bearings into these axles, so let's do that now. This is a disc off a Series 3 RX-7, so it's a Series 3 RX-7 has a 4x114.3 uh, stud pattern, so normally it's only got four studs. This disc uh, has been re-drilled to suit Ford stud pattern, which is 5x114.3, so normally it would have one, two, three, four, five studs. Two of them are broken off, um, and we're going to be actually replacing all these studs with um, half-inch studs, like uh, really long heavy duty uh, ARP studs. Um, to do that we've got to pull the axle out and at the same time we're also going to be replacing the uh, the rear diff bushes because yeah, it's a second hand car so we don't really know the, the history of it, we don't know how worn they are. Easiest thing is you know just to replace them, they're, yeah they're really cheap, I mean rear end diff uh, bearing kit for these things is something like both sides you'll, you'll be able to do for about 50 bucks in parts. First step is to take the caliper off, uh, then we'll be able to take the disc brake off. We'll uh, take the shock off anyway because we won't be using these. So this just comes off like so. Okay, next step to get the axle out, we need to loosen up the uh, retaining plate. One of the most important things about buying a second-hand car is always going over every part of the car before you uh, even think about racing it because as you can see we've discovered on a, a fair few bolts in this car that, um, that they're only basically nipped up finger tight. We'll use a, a pulling tool um, that'll basically locate off these two studs and it'll be able to it'll use a hammer action to pull this out towards us and, and pull that axle out. So we'll, uh, we'll bolt that on and um, set it up. I actually made this bracket about 15 years ago, I think, so it's it's probably seen better days, but it's served me well so far. Just nip these up with the impact wrench. I don't think there's many tools I love much more than this DeWalt impact wrench, I'll tell you what. There has not been a nut or a bolt that's been able to stand up to this thing so far. Now, basically, it's just a, a case of um, this this slide hammer um, has a stop up here and when it hits that stop that impact will drive hopefully the axle out of its place there we go there we go now you can see why this is such a popular rear end conversion for a lot of uh, early model rear wheel drive race cars I mean that is one meaty axle Alright, so the axle's out. Here we have the bearing retainer. 
The old bearing here, looks like it's seen a better days. Uh, you've got a locking collar and a, a circlip that holds it all in position. Uh, and this is the axle shaft. So what we have to do now is take off this circlip and then push the axle basically back down this way through the bearing and that will help us remove the bearing. We'll be able to fit the new bearing in, push it all back together and push the collar on. What we'll do now is use these circlip pliers to essentially push in the gap, push the circlip out. Yeah, that'll enable us to get to this collar and push the bearing out. All right, so that's part one, circlip's off. Next part is to push the axle back through here and we'll have a separate collar and bearing we can replace. All right, with the bearing now pressed off the axle, it's just a case of lifting this out here. Just a case of basically pressing this bearing out of the bearing retainer. Uh, cleaning up the residue of the axle and then a reverse of that process, pushing the new bearing back in here. Got our new bearing. We need to seat that bearing in there. Easiest way to do that is by using this old bearing, sit it on top of it and it'll give us a nice service to push down in it. Uh, at the same time, we're not marking the new bearings. As these are a sealed unit, no further lubrication is needed. Next up is fitting these monster half-inch wheel studs. We weren't going to take the chance using standard size as we've seen too many break over the years at the track. But first we need to open up this hole from 13mm to 15.5mm. So it's over to the milling machine to get that job done. Okay, so that's one job down. Next is to remove these busted shocks and replace them with something much more high tech. These will allow us to adjust the compression and rebound stroke of the shock independently, giving us hundreds of combinations we can tune into the car and hopefully get the most out of our tiny 8.5 inch slicks. Okay, so we've chosen to run a double adjustable shock absorber in the rear of the car. The main reason for that is being able to dial in the uh, shock absorber for different tracks. The small tyre that we're running you know, can be real hard to get traction on sometimes when you're putting in a lot of power on, on some marginal tracks. So having a double adjustable shock absorber means we have uh, quite a lot of adjustment here in the compression and rebound of the shock. That will determine how the weight is transferred and kept on the rear and then yeah, basically how the shock absorber reacts. So if we do have it set to full soft on compression and rebound, you'll see that you'll see the shock absorber is quite easy to compress. And it actually doesn't rebound at all. Okay, so turning our attention to the suspension arms, you can see that these poly bushes are totally ruined. And instead of replacing these poly bushes, because it's a drag car, we want to cut down any lateral movement in the rear end. So what we're going to do is actually make chrome moly rod ends and full chrome moly bar rear end. And this is how we do it. We're going to cut some of this tube up, insert the tube ends, put the rod ends in there, and whack them back in there. So let's have a look at that process now. So this is the factory suspension. This is the upper arm. This is the lower arm and the factory spring. I'm not actually sure after a few years of uh, abuse that these have been through that they're actually still true and straight, but more so to the point they, they run a, a poly bushing. So these bushings can move and flex under under the increased loads that we'll probably be seeing so what we're going to be doing here with this is basically replacing it with this um, chrome moly tubing chrome moly inserts and also these uh, chrome moly solid rod ends so that'll basically strengthen up that rear end and stop any any movement that these you know, these poly bushes may want to move so what we want to do is work out where's the best place to put the rod ends knowing that the the nut is also going to go here on the end um, to allow some adjustment back and forward. So we need to cut this much of the chrome molly uh, tube off. And then and it's just a case of welding those up and, and putting them back in the car. Time for some more rear end focus here and it's wheelie bar time. What do wheelie bars do? In real basic terms, they stop the front end of the car from rising too high at launch. 
especially with the standard shock spring combo up front. We want to limit the wheel height as well to give us a margin for error whilst we tune the rear suspension. So it's back to the welder and cutting up more chrome molly bars and cardboard templates for mounts on the diff. Right, so to attach the wheel and the top wheelie bar to uh, the bottom wheelie bar, we need to make uh, a bracket that'll sit um, either side of, of this main bracket. So here's our little cardboard template that we've made up. Here are our four brackets. So what we'll do now is uh, drill a hole here. We'll also drill another one here so we've got different um, adjustability options. Drill a hole here and here to mount the bracket here and then drill a hole for the wheel also. So what we'll end up with is uh, these sitting over here like a space with a spacer. Um, they'll sit either side of this bar uh, like that. Uh, this will sit here and then the wheel will sit in between. So uh, we'll drill those holes out now and we'll get the bracket mounted. Right, so here's some brackets we've made up for our wheelie bars. Uh, these will be the top brackets. These will be the bottom ones. They're not laser cut or anything. These were just uh, simply cut out of 3 mil steel plate. And then uh, from a, we used our little cardboard template uh, that we, we worked out on car. Then cut them out and then uh, just drilled half inch hole up here with the with the mill and we'll take the diff out of the car and we'll we'll properly weld them up in place it's much easier to do it off the car uh, with the TIG. So it's time to weld the uh, top brackets for the wheelie bars and they simply just slot over the axle tube there and then we've and then we've welded them in place on on both sides we'll put some reinforcement to join the two together as well as on the back side and we'll also reinforce the mount bracket the falling bracket there so uh, we'll finish off this one, do that side, and then we'll make the uh, reinforcer plates. Alright, so we've got the both brackets welded on. We've boxed in all the bracketry around here to give it some extra strength. Uh, Tighten up a few things we don't want. Uh, next step, we've cleaned it, degreased it, is um, to paint it. So let's make this thing look a bit more presentable. Alright, so this is what we've got at the moment. Got a wheelie bars, wheelie bars there, the brackets, and we just clearanced out that part there for now. So the bars just come back here, and now what we need to do is work out the centre distances, and we'll join, we'll cross brace this lower bar here to here, and cross, and up here as well. Um, so we just need to work out what those distances are. Uh, so the same up there as they are down here. The last piece of the rear end puzzle is the diff center. This Hilux diff has a welded center in it. That means that both wheels will rotate at the same time. And this is something we'd not recommend for a street car at all because it's dangerous and it's highly illegal. The diff ratio on this car came with a 3.5 to 1. Required ratios are easy to calculate by working out the mile per hour you want to cross the finish line with and your tyre height. We're going to go for a 4.3 to 1, which should put us in the ballpark of where we want to be. This is an extremely common ratio for a Hilux diff, so picking one up was easy. Yeah, to find out the final drive ratio is to count all the teeth on this ring gear, count the teeth on the pinion, divide the two, and that number is your final drive ratio. So you can see also this has got SIG locker, so it's basically just welding the spider gears together um, so you, you've got basically locked drive to, to both wheels at, at all times, so. So this is our diff apart, this is the pinion. So drive comes in through the tail shaft here, this turns, which in turn drives our differential gear, which in then turns uh, our differential center, which then spline the axles, turn the wheels. So um, at the moment, this ratio of the pinion to the gear is, um, is not the one we want. So we're gonna swap these two out for a different, different ratio. And, uh, and reassemble. So it's off with the old bearings and on with the new and time to put the centre back into the car. So that's it. The holes are patched. We've made some running repairs to the car. The new wheels, brakes and bearings are in. 
Let's see how that engine is going to be able to sit between the rails. That's it. So in the next episode, we're going to take a look at how the engine is going to sit in the car, the process behind where it goes and how to mount it. We're going to be tackling the sump, mounting the trans, mounting the engine and all things like that. So then we can move on to some of the really cool stuff like mounting the turbo, the intake manifold and all that kind of wicked stuff. So we'll see you then. Okay, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you receive notifications as soon as the next video installment comes out. Give us some feedback, write in the comments and let us know what you think. This is what you would call a, a lock diff or a SIG locker after the uh, welder SIG. So you can see here these are what are called spider gears and it what help, it's what essentially helps the diff turn one wheel slower than the other when cornering. Um, but in drag racing, we want both wheels to turn at the same speed at the same time. So what people will do, the, uh, you can get these, pull these spider gears out and you can run like a little mini spool or you can replace this whole center section with a, a fixed full spool. Um, but the cheapest and easiest and quickest way to do it is as you see here, which is just um, to add a heap of, of weld and, and weld these spider gears so it is, is now a locked diff, a fixed diff. Those, those spider gears can't move.